Hello my soccer universe, time to wrap up the 22-23 Serie A season, a season that's oh, Napoli become champions, Inter win the Coppa and Verona surviving on a playoff in a game that was not only rather interesting but way better than the Champions League final the day before. But I already said with Inter winning the Coppa, uh, it was also kind of, it ended on a bum note for, the, for the Serie A because you know, you reached three finals and for the first time ever that that happened, um, that nation that reached three finals didn't come home with a single European trophy. And arguably all three Italian teams were close and probably were, were, would have been the deserving winners of each of those uh, cups. Uh, that's I still have it up, 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 up in the air. I still maintain that um, Mourinho threw away the title for Roma because they could have won that really easily. That Fiorentina were really unlucky. They were the better team against West Ham. They were just not as clinically uh, as West Ham were. And yeah, what can I say about Inter? If you have the big beast ahead of you and you don't take your chances, you're gonna get killed. And that's exactly what happened to, to them. And I think the Italian newspaper saying uh, what a waste in reaction to the Inter's final loss. I can totally see, 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 see that they want that. This is a final that Inter will regret not winning for a long time to come. Uh, so that's basically wrapping up the, more or less the European final coverage there. But we want to focus on, on the league. And in this video, I'm also going to talk about uh, the promotion picture, which was also rather, rather interesting with a dramatic finish in the playoff final, which I thought was also, is also worth uh, looking at. The last thing is that, of course, the last time we, had, we talked, we got that Juve had a 10-point deduction where it was still up, up in the air. Are they going to appeal it or not? No, they, with all the other issues dangling above Juventus, uh, they basically went then into a plea bargain with the league and said, we're going to accept the 10 points, but we're only going to get now um, financially a, a fine that we have to pay, which kind of serious fine also so that we can say that the league table is final and we do accept this 10 points penalty so the table that we have here is the final one now this should not take away that without the points penalty Juve actually would have finished in third place which is a, a really good um, finish in a way if you think of how negative everything was around Juventus and I still don't get why Allegri should be sacked because of that Yes, it was not exciting, but I think he brought some young players uh, through as well. Now, the, the last big question that can happen is that because of all these uh, verdicts against Juventus, UEFA might still have a say and say, well, Juve, you may have qualified for the Conference League, but you know, because of that, you get a one-year ban from Europe. And I actually think qualifying for Europe then for Juventus was not that unimportant because get the ban out of the way while you're playing in the Conference League, not when you're qualifying, say, next season for the Champions League. So I think uh, it all, in the end, kind of evened itself out. But let's talk about this final match day. You know, top four was already already done with Milan uh, winning at Juve. And it was more or less all about the relegation picture and which team goes into the Conference League or in the Europa League, which basically will Juve make it into a, a better competition. At that point, it was also not clear yet whether Fiorentina uh, will be an eighth team. No, they're not, but they at least finished the season in eighth spot. Thanks to a 3-1 win over Sassuolo. All the goals came, come, come, come. Second half, Cabral opened the scoring, Berardi equalized. Then uh, Saponara gives, gets him head, uh, a red card for Sassuolo. Nico Gonzalez shortly after makes it 3-1. And then another red one for, um, uh, for Sassuolo. Sass Sass so crazy game there. Also Inter preparing for the Champions League final. Got a rather routine 1-0 win, uh, but fully deserved thanks to a Brozovic goal in the first half. Uh, we had also Lazio finishing the season in a very credible <laughs> and very sensational second spot. As big of a surprise that uh, it was that uh, Napoli 
we are so much ahead of the, uh, the, the competition. It also, also should be said that the second place finish for this Lazio side is rather, rather remarkable. How are they going to lose now SMS? So that's uh, also going to be interesting. Uh, Cremonese say goodbye to the league with a 2-0 win over Salernitana. And then we had a rather emotional game between Napoli and Sampdoria. I think the game itself was not great. I mean, Napoli having chances. Some Sampdoria giving kind of uh, a, a, their last big showing. Where we have to hope that Sampdoria will get new owners and the whole structure doesn't go so bad that they're going to, directly down to CRG or even worse. Uh, some Sampdoria is unfortunately uh, in real, real, real trouble there. But I really hope they will find new ownership and will escape for, for the second that, that it all is on the current ownership who, from what the water here, is rather, rather crooked overall. Napoli get finally the lead through uh, Victor Osimen. Um, and uh and shortly thereafter Simeone uh, no and then uh, towards the end Simeone uh with, with a great goal makes it 2-0 it was more or less you know as it was Napoli just enjoying the day out they know the trophy CR ceremony came after you saw all the towers around it um and everyone wanted, wanted to celebrate and not uh, you know I don't think anyone took the game too seriously however there was one uh moment and I have to say this was for me more emotional than what happened then uh in the evening in Milan when uh, Ibra said goodbye is when Cagliarella from Sampdoria was substituted off in his uh probably last game for Serie in Serie A he he may play more but this was def definitely a goodbye. He got substituted for Ivanovic in the 87th minute, and Cagliarella is from Naples. However, he never, uh, that's the, the sad story for him that the one time he was at Napoli, it didn't really work out, out for him on a professional as well as a personal level. But the way he was gr greeted and cheered off by all the Napoli fans, he got as much. Of an applause as did the entire Na Napoli team. And what what surprised me more is how every single Napoli player made absolutely sure to say goodbye to him. This was he was actually spending less time with his own teammates than with the entire Napoli squad. This was so moving. The way he, he, he went off, I thought this was uh, a, a, almost a perfect goal. By it reminded me a teeny bit of when Maldini got substituted in his last game at Fiorentina, where also the entire stadium cut off. Because you know when the the opponent's fans are all applauding you, then you have done something really special. Uh, the other one was, of course, Roberto Baggio uh, playing his last game for Brescia at Milan. That was also rather special. But in the end, it is, of course, Di Lorenzo lifting the, the trophy as the first captain since Maradona. And I think Napoli, they had some time to real estate and settle it. They had so many celebrations. Mean, me, meanwhile, this was not the one that really, really, really counted. Still would like to have that shirt. I still think it's way too expensive, to be honest with you guys. Okay, let's go to the relegation picture, which was actually decided between Milan and Verona and Roma against Spezia. And it was actually not decided at all, but it could have been. Uh, Roma come coming off, of course, the Europa Conference League defeat. However, they needed that win to make sure that they are in the top six. So that added a little bit to that um, game. The Milan-Verona game actually was a much better game than I expected it to be. However, it was not much there that we can talk about. I have to talk, say something about the new Milan jersey. While I may be able somehow to live with this crazy pattern, although I think it's way more... I don't mind a red Milan shirt, but I think it's a little bit too much red. And it reminds me very much of the jersey that Inter had last season, you know, the one with the snake pattern, where there was way too much blue on there. This is the one here, but what annoys me more are the black pants and especially the black numbers, which you cannot read from a distance. Uh, it's something that has to be overlooked and I gave Puma a pass now for two seasons in a row now you, I, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a traditional shirt again but I guess they thought that last season was uh, um, traditional in any case you know Milan uh, were playing around and at a point it actually seemed like there will be a decision because at the same time uh, Spezia took already a very early lead at the Olympico that was only equal to Zalewski just before the half. And Roma had a really hard time by, 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 by breaking down Spezia. 
And at the halftime, Verona would, would have gone down because uh, they were left they were level on points and in order for uh, it to be decisive they shouldn't have had to, the tie to broken otherwise would have gone to a decider which it eventually did and it actually took then another turn when uh Faraone, you know it was lit literally milan was controlling the game we were having creating chances it was all uh, going south somewhere then pobeg and teketelare come on and Faroni e almost e uh, immediately equalizes after Lazovic assists. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, this is typically Milan, but this time around, I don't really care. At the same time, it was all going crazy in Rome, where Roma uh, kind of desperately tried to get the second goal, but Spezia desperately tried to keep them out because that one point might have meant survival. Um, however, with Verona also tying, yep. Yeah, it was kind of level, but then Rafael scores a brilliant goal and celebrates immediately with Ibra. And then he gets a second one and Milan uh, win 3 1. Kind of a little bit, uh, very in an un Italian way, because at that point you would think that, yeah, you don't need the points, Verona needs the points, why do you win? And so on. This used to be in Italy, but it did not, uh, it was not of importance there. And what's even more is uh, Roma get a rather soft penalty let's let's put it that Dybala converts and then a stoppage time that was so long that after the Milan game ended all the Verona players huddled huddled around that they waited in with the celebrations for Ibra until that is done so you saw everyone huddling around will it stay will Roma win will Ro Roma win and we saying yes exactly that happened then afterwards we had of course we uh, talked about Ibra a uh, great send off for him uh, also greeting the Verona fans in typical Ibra fashion and then all hell break loose for Milan with the sacking of Maldini and uh, what can I say I, I made already a video about it um, I'm a little bit worried that I'm a little bit worried let's put it that way that uh, the, how the project will con con continue but again show me right now um, with the win by Roma, with the win also by Atalanta 5-2 over Monza, it was clear uh, that even if Juve Wolf would have won it, they don't make it into the Europa League. It's a Chiesa call it Udinese that secures that one. And so with that, we have now the final standings after the regulation, in a way, if you like, uh, where you see Napoli, uh, Lazio, Inter and Milan are in the Champions League, with Lazio being in there actually and the Union uh, qualifying. We have now from the top five leagues, we have for the first time ever in the Champions League, a team from every capital city, which I, is also rather interesting. Then Atalanta and Roma make it in, into the Europa League, Juve are in the Conference League, except but this might be contingent to any punishment uh, that might come from UEFA's way, which may see Fiorentina move in there. Uh, Bologna, again, finish a rather good season, a credible ninth finish. On the bottom, we had uh, San Antonio and Lecce securing survival already early on. Cremonese and Sampdoria have been gone for a while, so it came down to Spezia and Ellas, and it was still not decided yet at that point, which uh, was honestly crazy overall then um we got to that game a one game playoff we know that verona won it was played in reggio emilia yeah, at the home stadium of sassolo but also by regina uh who of course whose uh, ultras are not big fans with either one of these teams so what was was interesting the way the stadium was set up that behind the goal everything was full but they kept the fans very much separated because if there are any neutrals in the stand it might cause quite some trouble and it was a really really weird atmosphere it was almost like a reverse Braga uh, where you know there's no stands behind the goals here it was only behind the goals and the main stands were kind of kind of empty location wise it made sense because that uh Reage Emilia is literally roughly halfway between those two of those bits they have to go over the Apennine mountains uh the game actually as I said was really entertaining especially first half and uh Verona played some really great stuff uh the first uh, goal was nicely assisted by Lars Lazovic the Faraone takes a shot that can only be cleared by Ampadu on the line and they had a few more chances where they probably should have taken already the two nil lead however um in the 11th minute there was a chance then for spezia where you said okay now it gets a little bit even and then Amp Ampadu um gets a ball that came from shomurodov 
yanks it, it takes a double deflection, it goes higher, higher, higher into the corner, although I think it would might, might have even gone in without the deflections, and it is 1-1, one, one. and I thought that game came on, but this was a game where I could have bet with you that this ends in a nil nil or one nil and after 50 minutes it was a wide open super and en 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 entertaining game where in the end the class of uh, Verona showed showed through uh, especially with Duric and Gonj uh, the way they combined for the, sec the, the second goal for Verona the one two this was a brilliant attacking move uh, I would have loved to see something like that in the chat. Champions fight and Gonch on the count contact makes it 3-1 before the half. It also takes a deflection because I think the way he shoots it, I thought the keeper will have it, but the defender gets a um, leg in and it goes in. That was already the final score, however, this was by far not the end of the game. Uh, while Verona tried to play the ra rather safe, they really got into trouble then uh, when suddenly a ball comes through. Um, was it uh, who was it? Does, it doesn't matter who who was it. Uh, Lobs it over and, uh, Montipo, and Faroni has the only chance, and it was his mistake actually that that made the the change. Faroni runs back, cannot get with the head in, and boxes it with the hand out. So it's not a goal. Of course, it's a clear red card. It was almost like what uh, Luis Suarez did uh, against Ghana in 2010. Then Nzola steps up and sees his fan, a penalty saved by Montipo. And at that point, I felt really, really safe for Elas, to be honest. However, there were uh, two good chances. Uh, one that was cleared off by Montipo in rather unconventional fashion. Then very late on, uh, Ampadu hits the crossbar. So he more or less scores an own goal, scores a great equal, and has a third, third chance where he's, he hits the woodwork. In the end, it all works out for Elas Verona. And while I... I was definitely more fair for Verona because I think they're a much better team. Also, when I think about, about Milan against Verona, uh, they always made the points, whereas against uh, Space, Space, they have been a thorn in, in the side for three seasons running. It also means that uh, a little Maldini is the first one to um, get relegated, although he was not playing. Um, but I, I, I was mostly for it because I didn't want to have, lose another team due to rele, re, relegation and relegate them to my closet. So I was rather pleased with that one. However, at the same time, there was even better stuff. And now we're going to talk about uh, Serie B uh, and uh, that crazy playoff system. I mean, we knew already that Frosinone and Genoa were uh, promoted. We lose one Genoa team in, um, uh, in Sampdoria. The older one comes up so that egg, 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 actually kind of a little bit of a reason. I think that Genoa is definitely a team that should be in Serie A uh, just purely by history. They, uh, they are one of the most titled teams in uh, Italian his, in, in Italian his, his history, being also the oldest team. And Frozen for All is probably a good story and I remember them not too long ago to be in Serie A. But then the playoff had quite a few interesting teams in, in there. We are talking here uh, Bari, Parma, Cagliari, Sutero, Regina and Venezia. Really, really big, big ones. And uh, especially we had two promoted teams in there in Sutero and Regina uh, from the previous season. And with Cagliari and Venezia, two relegated gay teams playing in the first quarter, quarter final where both home teams make it through. Then there's this crazy rule in that league that um, if two team if the tie ends level, the team that finishes the season with uh, uh, more uh, with more points or ahead in in a, in a table will actually advance, which would have almost play, uh, which which play a part with Sutor against Bari, which Sutor won the first game one nil, but Bari won the other one, so Bari is through to the final. But if Parma would have just won against Cagliari, as far as I know. Unless they say uh, if it's level on points, maybe, maybe, maybe they, because uh, Parma and Cagliari finished lev level on points, so that would have, have been interesting. But I think Parma had the higher seed. If Parma makes it 1 0, Parma is through to the final. However, it is Cagliari who in the first leg came behind from being two goals down. And then Cagliari against Bari in the final, um, in the promotion final. The first game, first off, Cagliari were all over Bari. Uh, Lapadula scoring early on, they had a second goal, they had multiple, multiple, multiple chances. However, they also give away a penalty that Jadira uh, sees saved. 
And then again, it was it was a little bit more open in the second half, but still with advantage, Bari. However, Antonucci in the 96th minute gets an equalizer, which would have meant the other game, second game, ends nil-nil. Bari are getting promoted. And of course, we had a full San Nicolas Stadium, very great atmosphere. It was played almost at the same time, 15 minutes earlier, kickoff than the uh, playoff final. And unfortunately, I could not watch that one, but I followed it. But uh, big, 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 because it was really, really in, 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 interesting about what's going on. Again, I think Calgary had a little bit more and more of the game, but Bari had their chances as well. In the end, it seems like they goes to nil-nil in the 94th minute. Pavoletti gets the winner. Late, late, late. And so yesterday, all the games that I was watching went into the, into the favor of my collection, because not only do I keep the uh, shirts for uh, Verona, my Barish, my Cagliari shirt will make a comeback and I'm very pleased and also happy because I have some work colleagues from Cagliari that are huge fans, very happy for them. And so we can summarize now the Serie A season. Here, here it is. We know already, I said already, who won who, who won the titles. Uh, we look at relegation and promotion. Some Dora Cremonese Spezia going down. Frosinone, genuine Cagliari coming up. Uh, genuine Cagliari, of course, um, more or less too heavy. I don't want to say super heavy, heavy weights, but very storied teams. So that it's good to see them back again. Uh, and if we look now here, um, the comparison of the points that were accrued and uh, versus preseason expectation, we clearly see that Napoli and Lazio are the biggest surprises, whereas Ellas was a negative surprise. Uh, they should have done much better. And we have to see, I mean, this is a team that lost many great players to bigger teams. Um, can they rebuild or will they go into in the trouble? There also was, you know, the playing style they had, like uh, the Juricis and um, the, um, the Marseille coach uh, as their coaches. I don't, uh, the name doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come. Down. So that, that will that have been interesting. Also notable that Salentano amply exceeded uh, expectations as did Bologna, both Milan clubs being behind expectations, which sounds about right. Juve actually with the 10 points would have actually lived exactly up to expectations. Uh, and also the same thing goes for when we compare the ratings, we see Ellas and Sampdoria, clearly the neg negative ones. Uh, Juventus, a little bit uh, lower as well. Uh, so they have lost, as did both Milan teams. Of course, Napoli, big, big winners there. That is it from Serie A. As I said, it could be that there is something coming for Juventus, but that's the only thing that could happen. Not sure if it is worth a video. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.